So um, not knowing exactly where people were coming in with different you know, uh, skills and whatnot, I just decided to pick some topics, but we're, we're obviously a nice uh, small group, so we can cover anything you all want to talk about, whatever, wherever you like. Um, for this one, what I wanted to, to cover specifically um, were just some more advanced chord types and uh, some chord variations. I'm going to give you a handout if you all would like it with the same information so you can take it home. And talk about some of these. There's one producer. Thank you. Um, so let me just kind of a little bit of background. So do, you, do both of you feel comfortable with the standard open chords? Yeah. yeah okay. So you, and you're oriented toward now. Both of you flat pick or finger pick or both? Flat pick. Flat pick? Both. You're doing both. Okay. All right. So I'll just cover some of the things that are on here, but feel free to, you know, we'll just ask away and we'll kind of okay. work through this. So for our for our left hand, um, anytime you get into finger picking, you're going to see, in the, which is in our chart too, that the hands will be marked P-I-M-A for your right hand. So P for thumb, oh. I for index, M for middle, and um, a for the ring, we don't really use too much the, uh, the D, um, although in some types of advanced guitar like flamenco uh, and some advanced classical, you will get the pinky in there. It just tends to be a little bit weak volume wise. So when we when we do finger picking, which we'll, we'll go over in more detail in just a moment, um, we tend to have our thumb on a low string and then your um, I M A up here. Right, so we'll go into all the details about how to, how to work those different finger picking uh, structures in there. So Pima for the right hand, and then one, two, three, four. Unlike um, when I have uh, younger students who have a piano background, it goes one through five, or we do one through four for guitar. So just to clarify on that. All right, so moving along. All right, so the chord types that are on, that are on here, what you have are the, are the primary um, open chords, and then you have a few types of bar chords. So along the top, the way these are organized and um, are by key. So essentially from, from left to right, you will have six chords that tend to work well together. Because you notice that, for example, the C chord shows up twice, the G chord shows up twice, D. And that has to do with the theory, the relationship between those two chords. So you know C, F, and G work well together, but those aren't the only chords that, that uh, that work well with those same numbers. So G, C, and D, D, G, and A7. Um, all of these three are considered the primary major chords uh, that are, are called the one, four, five, which is a theory term which we can get into, but most, the vast majority of songs will, will stay within those three chords, and sometimes we'll go into this fourth column, which is our sixth chord, our relative minor chord. Those are terms you don't need to necessarily worry about, but the first four tend to be the chords that make up the bulk of most songs. Worship songs, guitar, rock songs, uh, folk songs, any of that kind of stuff will have those four chords. Um, so uh, now both, you both are familiar then with reading chord diagrams. Yes. All right, so we're not going to go over that so much. So you'll notice too on some of the chords like the F, and if you go down and take a look, it's like the F7, you notice that kind of um, ellipse on the top, which indicates a bar. Is that familiar, the term bar chord? Familiar to? Okay, right. So anytime you see those bar chords, you, you, in terms of technique, you have the two types of chords, which are your open chord, which tend to be anything that has an open string, and that's not movable. So in other words, if I take an open C, if I move it because there's open strings, it will have... Yeah, you can slide it. Yeah, you can, there are some that sound okay. Um, uh, for example, you'll have a song, like there's a turnaround for Led Zeppelin that uses a minor chord that is movable, but it, it's not only minor as you move it around. But those extra open strings create a different tonality. So it's not technically movable. Movable chords are the full bars where no matter where you move them, will retain their major or minor quality. So why do you call these sharp keys? Uh, they use, uh, if you were to play through the notes of the scale, for example, in the key of E, if I play the E major scale, we have E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, D. So as you go through um, and learn the different keys, even on guitar, the scale will have the same uh, pattern. I can 
actually that same pattern anywhere. Um, with the rub, the sharps and flats will change each time you shift position. Mm -hmm. So knowing what key you're in will allow you to um, to then find what the what the names of the chords are. So fortunately, these are these are arranged for such. But as you get into um, some of the the sharp chords, they only you can only play them with bar chords. So a lot of people uh, reasonably stick with the key of C, key of G, key of D. Um, when we start, is that you notice that for the for the four primary chords, there are no bars required, except for the F. So um, a lot of people will start with G and D simply for that reason. Yeah. A and E are kind of more vocal friendly for most people. Um, are they, or at least, uh, I guess, for those of us that say, tend to say lower? It, it really depends where the melody sits. Um, you, you can. Uh, if it's a male or female singer, or where where, it's, where the writer has written the melody. Okay. Um, that that said, you know, if uh, a lot of people will, will learn a handful of open chords, and you can use a capo, if that's a familiar um, thing for everybody too, to raise and lower. So that's that's really really easy to do. Yeah. So um, it it really depends on where the melody sits, but but uh, most most um, men's voices will uh, on the low end. Kind of Low G. Mm, if you can get up to an octave, so G tends to be friendly. Mm -hmm. And right around that area, uh, we, we have the key of G in there. We have the key of A. It fits in there really nicely. C gets you up to that G and a little bit below. So yeah, somewhere somewhere in there that works really well. Okay. So the uh, so anyway, you have those basic chords. So I wanted everyone to have you know a copy of, of what they what they like. If you are trying to figure out a song or write a song, having this kind of arrangement of the chords is very handy because um, if you've got a couple chords and you know kind of logically where the other ones are going to sit, then you can kind of find them out. So, you, uh, or conversely, if you want to write a song, you hear where, where it's going but you can't figure it out, then you can just deduce like, oh, it's probably going to be one of the other couple chords in the key. So anyway, this lists them all out and just in terms of basic technique. For bar chords, um, there's there's a couple ways to do it. It's almost always with your index finger. Um, you can you can either have your finger flat. For some chords, you almost have to. Or some people prefer to actually angle the bar chord uh, a little bit on the side of the finger. Um, there's less less flesh, and you get the knuckles uh, to work for you. So like the, the more pressure on it. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you um, a lot of people will struggle with, when they first take a guitar on the F chord because of this this double bar right here. So if this, this becomes very awkward and also the strings just sink into your, the pad of your finger. So angling it, if some people find this a little bit easier, working on the, very, on the side, and you can have this nice kind of sharp, very clear sound on the upper two strings. Right. So if you, if you go through those, um, just keep in mind with the bar chords that as you play through um, the rolling of this uh, index finger, from the from flat off to the side can make a lot of difference if you're struggling with a particular chord. Now, I also found like on your M chord, um, there it's barred all the way, it's uh, barred all the way, you know. Instead all six of, strings. Uh, all six yes. strings. Yes. Um, that also has a really um, full sound. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, it, it, that feels more comfortable to me to play the full bar rather than get yeah, the bottom two, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and, and and it's, it's worth noting that as you're speaking as adults doing this with the bigger hands, it does tend to work that way. Um, you smaller hands or younger folks don't tend to, to fit, think with the same way. Also, you notice with the F chord, because just the way the strings are light out, this is the highest point of tension on your fingerboard. So it, when people are starting to learn bar chords, I think it's a little bit easier to go up to your G's and A's in the same shape, rather than having to push down against oh, where, yeah. where, the, where the nut is here. It's just really high tension. So uh, people get frustrated by the F chord and they start to throw in the towel a little bit. Um, but it's not to worry, it's you know, a little bit easier to kind of move yourself down the neck and eventually get the pressure. And it's worth noting too, you know, that to make sure your guitar is set up properly, we can talk about that a little bit too, that your strings are as close to the, the fingerboard as possible without buzzing. And so you don't have to muscle it. If you're fighting your guitar and your, your hand is getting too sore, um, you know, it, it's, it might be something with your instrument that's not something you don't want to take personally. Like, wow, 
why is it me? You know, it's not necessarily you, it could also be an instrument as well. Um, so yeah, those are those are all self things. So this the sheet that you have does not contain the full bar chords, but I know um, we would be getting to all that today. But if it's if you're okay to move to the next one, sure. these are variations which I, I found really fun to use uh, on all of the um, all the chord types. So you'll notice that on um, on all of them, they're based off of an open chord shape. Uh, and this can be moved, moved around a little bit. Um, if, just, just again, for, for reference, if you have these X'd out versus, um, versus either a fret marking or an open string, you want to avoid any of those extra low notes right. to get for the character of the chord. And you'll find that really, really quickly um, why that is when you start playing them. You know, you have a beautiful, um, you know, a D suspended two chord, which is basically a D chord with an open top string. But if you, if you with your right hand technique is sloppy, and you're all the character of the chord disappears. Right. So these, if you, if you, if you want to quickly turn yourself from a player who's like, wow, why do I sound so bad? To ooh, this sounds better. If a lot of that has to do with the discipline of the right hand and just keeping yourself to those strings. So just to run through some of the sounds, because I think if you know, as, as a guitar player who's gone at the intermediate level, you're familiar with what majors sound like, what minors sound like, what seventh chord sounds like. But these variations are just, you know, kind of, so we have an A minor, A minor seven, a little bit smoother sound, A, then all these are kind of suspended sounds where you have this kind of, uh, I'm just going on the top of them, so A sus two, which is a suspended second, where you're taking the third, uh, of the chord and lifting it so it's open. Um, so you're basically removing the C sharp to B, or you take that C sharp and suspend it up higher, which is a fourth. So this is A sus four, A and A sus two, and you can make songs just out of that. Getting a three-string bar. 
as opposed to a two. Right. So I try to you know orient these in, in, in ways that and also you don't see a lot of G minors here. Whereas in the E, E minors are pretty simple. Um, you can get them with D. C minors are also pretty tricky because you need an E flat. And they're the only E flat is down here or up, up top. So if you want to get to a C minor, you almost have to do some type of bar chord or just a, like a C minor knot. So this is not exhaustive, but I tried one, I, I think practically, um, as a reference, you just have ones that, that sound good. If you had your own, you know, I encourage you when you take these home to play through them and get the sound in your ears so you can call it. Like, you know, one of my favorite ones, um, this is a, a C add nine, is a really useful one because it goes quickly to a G. You know, you'll see a lot of this kind of chord. Right, you just have to move. And anchoring up here with those two, so. to it, so if we do this one, the same one. And so forth. And feel like you can move comfortably. And often it's just getting the distance between there. Now, again, practically speaking, 
Um, some guitarists will be a different. I like to have my hand on the on the bridge pins or anywhere down by your bridge. Mm -hmm. um, most most guitars will have a bridge pin or a, or a string through saddle or something like that. Um, I find that this helps keep me accurate. Okay, that that's where you put your wrist. Um, I like to put this exactly, oh, just the, your hand. exactly the center part of your palm. I usually rest it on the on the E bridge pin, the low okay. bridge pin. And that's regardless of whether you're bigger, bigger, or flat. Bigger. Well, if yes, if I if I was doing chords and strumming heavily, like if it's you know if you're up leading a worship song or you, know, you won't want to be down here for yeah. full strums. But for for all the articulate stuff like finger picking and and our, our so you'll see guitarists they'll move for the. Before you go back to full strums, so it's very important where you want to where you want to end up. For finger picking, a lot of people will um, when they start off will have the kind of hand hanging over, which is more of a classical technique, where your hand essentially is, is in the free position, and you are I always call it grabbing the Kleenex out of the box. So you have this kind of where you're doing all simultaneous, um, but all if you're if you're breaking them apart your hand will still eventually come to that. So it's always this kind of motion of drawing the string upward like this. So the patterns that you have on this page are combinations of either um, using all four fingers uh, in, in independently or with, with some that are we're plucking together. So just as to pick one, for example, number five, you have this pattern where you're playing your low string, index, and then these two together, and then back index. Middle and? Uh, so yeah, so it'd be uh, thumb, oh, index, and then middle and ring together. Oh, I see, okay. Mm -hmm. So that one would be. Like so. Now when you, when you move those from a six string chord to a five string chord, you can leave, you can leave your upper fingers just where they are, and just simply move your thumb to change base. You know, so if you if you want to keep that pattern, you say you fall in love with that pattern. If you move to your C chord, you're simply gonna move your thumb down the other side the same. For a D, you're simply moving your thumb down here. So if in, if going back to the key of G, you can either walk up to it or or it's usually no more than three additional notes. Right. So it's either just one, two, three, or and then find where you walk up to C or combining them and up to D is a little tricky. Something that if you're singing, it tends to be a distracting um, to the vocal part. But in between, if you're just you know, playing that as an introduction, or you have a transition where you, you're finishing your, your singing those chords. So there's a lot of these techniques, um, it's kind of a matter of, you, you have them, 
uh, so you can call them up when you need them, but they're not going to be used all the time. But yeah, knowing your base is really important. And I didn't I didn't write that here, but you can, if if you're visual, uh, you know, learning a key. Let's see, I think I might have one next. Okay, perfect. So, for example, on the very last one, playing the melody. So this is the open position, right? So this is the the low low part of your neck in the key of C. So we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, all of your bass notes in the key of C will be here, okay? So memorizing that, those are your choices. And then you say, how many, how many beats do I want to have in between fourths? If you just want to do two walk-ups, for example, you know that your C chord is here. So you can walk up from A to B to C, right? If you're walking down your G chord, you can have one, two, three, four going down, or E, F, G. Now, if you're in the key of G and you were adding that F sharp, you notice you're gonna have to move that up, this right. one as well. Right. So you can work from, from no sharps and flats to one sharp to two sharps and then see how that changes each time. So even though I don't have this on, on your page, but um, the first sharp is F sharp, so that moves. When you go to the next one, which is two sharps, that's F sharp and C, so that has to move up. Okay, so two sharps is in the key of D. Um, so if you were walking in the, and you wanted to walk down to A, you have to add that C sharp as opposed to the C natural. You know, is a really good way to, to especially as a songwriting uh, thing as well, uh, to start to uh, be able to make nice transitions. Here's your F sharp. So in your, with the two sharps, you have for your basses. So anywhere you're in there. just going down the scale. Then you can lay out, so that, that's going back in the key of D. I'm just gonna flip around a bit. So if we go back to that key of D, um, where you can then say walking down from D, C sharp is in there. You have your B minor, so you're walking down the B minor. Down to your A7, if you want our A natural, you know, just regular A. Right. What's that? Yeah, we're down to G. Now, if, we have an F sharp, so we're gonna to have to go down to this one, which is F sharp with a D in the bass. I mean, D with F sharp in the bass, excuse me. Or your F sharp minor. Back to D minor, sorry. There it is. So even with those three chords, if we did in the key of D,
the open position scale is good. We talked about our uh, articulate. The last thing I want to talk about was articulation, like hammer ons and pull offs mm -hmm. and stuff. Is that something you're familiar with? Yeah, I was going to say oh, that was one of my next question about hammer ons and pull offs and things. Yeah. Um, so if they're familiar to you, I assume you've tried them before you've done them and yeah. okay. So you know you got to hammer on hard enough to make sure that the string keeps vibrating. Pulling off, um, a lot of people will start with do lift off instead of pulling down. So you actually need to do your pull offs. You want to pull down, pluck down on the string instead of you were essentially plucking with your left hand. Um, the, uh, no, it's not going to sound as good. That kind of thunderstruck or those kind of wrists where it's all hammer ons and pull offs. Um, you have to be hitting the string with enough force and pulling off so it actually gets to vibrate. So, um, so for, our, for practical purposes, for our open chords, especially too, just like you have variations on them, you can, anything where, you're, where your fingers are down, you can actually hammer on or pull off as well. So a real common one for C chord. bad to do two uh, if they're you know kind of together. I was I was right. imaginary super glue. And there's tons of riffs you can do that just you know Actually, make it louder. You actually 
push into the guitar. Oops, sorry. To make it actually stay. And I guess it, 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 it should be, it bears mentioning too that the best tone on any part of the fret is right behind the right. fret. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. the sound, which a lot of people don't really think about at first, is, is metal on metal. Sure. If there's no metal touching metal, you just get buzzing or you get nothing. So, you know, as you move back, it just disappears on you. So, in terms of slides, if I slide from here to here, it'll die up quicker. And that's much more pure tone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It has a much cleaner, pure tone to it. And the same thing with, um, it's going to be a little bit tricky to articulate bends on this, but you, you also want to bend right next to the front to get that sound. Slide. And as opposed to, you know, if I, if I were just doing right, it's something simple, but right, it's much, much more interesting to listen to if you can start to add some of those nice articulations. It's going to dig into your fingers, but that's just one of the things that'll happen. Um, uh, taking simple metal, I think it's a really good thing if, if, if you all want to practice these kinds of things at home. Take simple melodies, just it doesn't have to be anything fancy. But how can you make it sing like a vocalist would? Everyone's heard, you know, a song sung terribly, mediocre, and then fantastic. Yeah, kind of like the Star Spangled Banner before yeah. sporting things. Yeah, you, you you can mangle it. You can you can take it off into like fantastic guys. It's the same words, it's the same melody, right? So it's it's it has to be a matter of technique and of you know the soul of the performer, and and you can articulate the soul of the performer the more technique you have. So a technique is not an end in and of itself, but it gives you this wide array of sure. possibilities. And once you can control it, you can make something. Uh, now, Star Spangled Banner is a very difficult melody. That's why uh, it's one reason a lot of people blow it is because of the range. Yeah. It's a massive, massive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You remember Roseanne Barr? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I remember that one. Um, Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, I love it, love it, love it, love it. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of fun. Folks, one more question. If you're playing a scale or a run, let's say you go to C, D, E, F, G, mm -hmm. or you get to the G, you get a better tone out of it if you play the open G or, or the fifth fret G? Uh, I, I prefer uh, the, the fret the notes. You have more control. Once you get an open string, there's nothing you can do with it. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. But it, you know, if, if you're playing a fast song, like we were playing a little bit of bluegrass in the session before this, if you're just gonna be scooting over that G and, and, uh, and not really hanging on that note, if, you, if you're playing versus, sounds okay, but I can do much more here. You can vibrate with that, whereas if once, I, once that's it. But if it's a quick thing, I like that. No one's going to know to care too much if it's open or closed yeah. because it's just going too quick. Um, and, and you're playing, and I guess it just depends on the way you want to color it. Um, the preference between and your your open uh, chords and your uh, your bar chords, like your open G versus your you know, your bar and G. Right. Uh, uh, um, you know. Where do you, where and when, and yeah. why? Um, so the first thing is are you playing by yourself or playing with others? Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're on your own, the open like an open G has a resonance, and and where you um, and they ring over each other mm -hmm. in a different way. Versus right. This tends to have a, a little bit um, more of a shimmer to it, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's pleasing to hear with the voice, but if you wanted to do something rhythmic, like your chord progression was G and C, like something like that, if I did that open, it's a little flat or plus, I can't, I can't. And I think that, that's what I, that's sort of my preference many times, when I just want to get that nice, Rhythm that nice chank um, yes. to do it more when it's um, you know, bar, bar, bar work. Oh yeah. Okay. yeah. If, if, if you if you have the hand strength to do it, it's I I think it's it's a more much more 
rhythmically powerful way, mm -hmm. as opposed to this more like a ballad, yeah. or kind of like the love song or the, the quiet song, where it's just something that's rhythmic and up tempo. You want to be able to, uh, you know, you, one of my favorite players, Keith Richards, will have this. Yeah. strings it just doesn't tend to cut it that way yeah. but if you play if you, you'll notice in most guitar bands that have two they'll just divide them up a little bit mm -hmm. one will be open one will be in the view of that church service yeah, or well, you'll put a capo and you know have one on one octave and the other one on oh the absolutely yeah and capos work really now it's interesting you mentioned that if you, you want to do um, open chords with capos you can get a little bit more punch because the higher strings Example, that same chord progression. If we did just the, the G's and C's, um, the higher ones don't hit. If you play it with, without the capo, it tends to have much just fuller sounding. Once you start shortening the strings with the capo, you can you, you open open chords almost tend to sound like like bar chords. You don't. You miss a lot of that that, that long string resonance. Right. Same reason why you can't do that with the bass guitar. The, the the strings are too long. So the longer the string, the lower the, the, the pitches. The resonance starts to work against you. Mm -hmm. So the sweet spot on the guitar is a real sweet spot, but you um, you you get less and less of that as you capo up and play higher. Just the same same thing. Why a mandolin um, doesn't have that same problem of resonance because the strings are just too short and you don't really catch it that much. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely find that playing with, with your bar, with your power bar, bar chords up here is really helpful and sounds fantastic. And again, if you can muscle it, one more reason to have your guitar set up so that you don't have to muscle all your way through it. And two, you, you know, over the course of the song, you can change. Say, I'm going to do my verses with that kind of powerful thing and when I get to the chorus, and it's just a big, long held note. Thing. <laughs> of sound mm -hmm. and then you have this big opening up so you use the guitar like a, as a way to orchestrate the sound too yeah. any other questions on, on this different yeah, things um, yeah I'm, I'm talking too much I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing um, the right hand uh, as far as being rhythmic and uh, melodic um, that's another thing that I, I, I as of late um, between um, picking and strumming, you know, you're, you're, you're picking something, you're doing a, um, a part of that same note, and then you're uh, the chord, and you actually, you know, you, you play the chord, and then you, you know, kind of pick that chord, and you play it. So mm -hmm. uh, that has given me, a, uh, as of late, a nice change in um, uh, doing it that way as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you can, um, a lot of people, it will, and there's, uh, you either have, you can do all fingers, or only strumming, or we talked about arpeggios, you know, being able to. Or, and, or the, the, we call it the national pick style, which is where you, you use your, you're doing a flat pick, and these are gonna be your, that's why a lot of national players would use the thumb pick, yeah. same difference, but I, I, I've never felt comfortable with one, but you know the Chet Atkins and that that whole yeah. um, mm -hmm. style of playing is very very adept at it. Um, but you can still have it works really well for for electric guitar as well because you can start to get that nice um, you know yeah. Yeah, and it's a little, it sounds a little clunky on acoustic, but works great for acoustic. So you can keep a nice pulse here and then work your mm -hmm. technique this way. Um, some acoustic players, there are very few anymore, will, will use metal finger picks here, but it's, it's kind of fallen out of fashion, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, being able to, I, I, so I find if I'm, if I'm going to be doing too much in the way of finger picking, if I'm, I can't, you can't really do too much with the thumb by itself, but you can with your hard pick here. Do that. Um, so yeah, rhythmically too, you know, where you hit on, on 
this part of your guitar makes a big difference. Right. Um, Close. Same thing for, for muting strings, you gotta be back. Without choking it up top. So this is this is a nice place. Uh, again, resting back here. If you are gonna be doing like you mentioned, using a pick and then also some articulation on the um, use the arpeggios or finger stuff as well. Yeah. So where do you tend to mostly play, and I know that it, it depends on the song, but but other than where do you tend to play, is it mostly in the middle, right there in the middle? Yeah, I, I like, um, right there. Yeah, basically, you know, so that um, either I'm, I'm either lifting up to play something that's that's fast, or if I have to quickly go down. Because if, if just take a single, simple note like the low G. sweet area where you have this kind of very liquidy um, mm -hmm. yes. but if I want to do you like or same thing to bounce back and forth, um, this just like having too much sweet is going to make you sick after a while. <laughs> Unless, you know, if you stay up here, it, it tends to have that, like, okay, what, what are we going to do? So if you want force, it, the song's going to be moving up, um, where you really got to be even in um, dynamic. So I'm what I'm looking for. And then bring it back here so it cuts through a little bit more. So I, yeah, just re re resting right back here tends to be pretty good. So like for finger picking, that's called the hitchhiker's thumb, right? Mm -hmm. You're just kind of laying it down like that. So this, this to me is is a good finger picking, um, as opposed to this um, getting the wrist twisted around. Mm -hmm. um, the thumb should be always kind of working in this circle motion, and to do that comfortably and not kill your strings, you're more or less right about here. So your thumb is going to rest, you know, toward that the back of the sound hole, right in that area, and these fingers will be. Plus two, you notice that it's, you, if your finger is going to come quick off the strings, it's, there's, there's more tension down here. So you're not going to be drawing and dragging the string too much. But right here is, is a good tension, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, so your fingers will bounce off the strings quick back here. Song and other people learn it. 
how about cool must that be when you hear it come back to you in a different way, right? Um, I think it's uh, not I haven't had that experience, but I can see where that you know, would be just as special as well. But yeah, yeah. So right, yeah, but right about there. But uh, it's all technique. It's good technique as long as it's not just for its own sake. You know, you find a find a song. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think if you if you are attracted to all different kinds of music, you will you will gather those techniques naturally over time. Mm -hmm. Especially if you know you listen outside of you know what specific genres. Exactly because you know the the chords are the same. Right. <laughs> you know. Directions can be the same. Right. That's why I say the right hand is where where all the different stylistic stuff mm -hmm. is all in the right hand. Kind of um, that's really where it's really where you um, where you differentiate because like I said if your harmony and all the shapes are going to be the same, but you know you know the difference between country and folk and bluegrass is all going to be down here. It is it is the, it's your voice it's your volume it's everything is right in here so um, once you got your chords down I think people don't think too much about where they want to spend their time but right hand or strumming technique is really the way to go so I hope that's been helpful um, you know so you go through. yeah absolutely and you know, if, if you um, you're welcome to a list if you want if you ever have questions you want me to reach out to or anything like that feel free anytime just to you know 